In my storage video earlier, I briefly mentioned there are hundreds of database options out there. Each of them have their own characteristics and support certain functionalities. But there is one characteristic that we can use to categorize the databases into two major categories. And that characteristic is mainly based on the structure of data that is stored in the database. And the two categories are relational and non-relational databases. A relational database imposes a tabular-like structure on the data stored in it. In other words, data stored in a relational database is in the form of table as you can see in the screen. In fact, tables are also called relations in a relational database that store a bunch of data representing a specific entity. So if you look at the column names and values in this table, you will soon realize it represents payments for some product. Every row in the table represents a single payment and the column represents the attributes of the entities such as customer name, payment amount, payment date and so on. As you can see, the data is stored in the tables is in well structured and very well defined which is one of the key characteristics of relational databases. All the tables that you store in a relational database are going to have defined schema. You can think of schema as a set of rules or plans on how a data should be stored in them. It is one of the primary responsibilities of a database designer or architect to define schemas. For example, making decisions such as in one table we store payments and what columns will the payments table have. So whenever there is an entry in the table, it needs to confirm with the table schema. So in this table, if I have to store customer account number, I would have to first create another column or else I won't be able to store that. In contrast, non-relational database don't impose tabular structure or schema on the data they store. Most relational databases support SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language and is very powerful database programming language. Since almost all relational databases support SQL, the term relational databases and SQL or SQL database are used often interchangeably. SQL or SQL itself is a large topic, but you need not be an expert in SQL programming in the context of designing systems. So here, I will just discuss only few key things about SQL you need to know. People usually pick relational database because with the help of SQL, you can perform powerful and complex queries on the data stored in the database as compared to non-relational database. Now, some of you might be thinking that why not use another programming language such as Python or JavaScript to implement these complex queries. But one thing you always need to keep in mind that databases are usually part of large scale distributed systems, sometimes with terabytes of data. And if you wanted to write a Python script to query the data, you would have to load the data in memory. Loading that kind of data is simply impractical, if not impossible. This is where SQL shines because it will perform the query directly on the data without loading the data in memory. Now, there are two more important concepts which you must know when dealing with relational databases. They are asset and database indexes, which I have explained separately in my other short videos. And if you have found this video informative, please give a thumbs up and consider subscribing.